Hey guys, Mike here. So today, I'm here to talk to you about 2018's Bad Samaritan, starring David Tennant as Kale Erendrick and Robert Sheehan as Cole Falco. In Bad Samaritan, a pair of burglars discover a woman tied up in a house that they intended to rob. And so we have Bad Samaritan. So guys, today's review was requested by my dad, who said, you know, if you're looking for a film to watch, why not watch Bad Samaritan? He also told me that David Tennant was in it, and I was like, yeah, all right then, I like David Tennant. I swear I'd heard of this movie before, but I didn't really know what it was about. But judging by the name of the film and kind of the look of it, I could guess that it had something to do with David Tennant being a villain of some kind. But in any case, what do they think of Bad Samaritan? Well, I know I say this every time that David Tennant plays a villain, but I just can't get over this. Now, I've always pretty much seen David Tennant as a great actor, ever since I've seen him in Doctor Who and everything he did in between and after Doctor Who. But when I heard that he was going to be in Jessica Jones as a villain, I was like, nah, David Tennant's good, but I don't know if he can play a villain. And all he did in his first scene was stand up and turn around. I was like, okay, yeah, David Tennant can definitely play a villain. I mean, I know he did villain roles before Jessica Jones, but this was the one that really, for me, cemented him as a great villain. And it gets to the point now where it's kind of hard to see him as the good guy because he just really, oddly convincingly, plays bad guys just too well. I mean, what can I say? The guy's just a versatile actor. And this role's no exception. David Tennant is easily one of the highlights of this film. Cool, calm, collected, but at the moment's notice, he can just snap and unleash the beast inside him. He's manipulative, he's calculating. He's just pretty much everything that makes a really intense and scary movie villain. And as well, I really liked how the movie was somewhat sparing with details about his past. Because for the longest time in the film, you can kind of make it up for yourself as to who this guy is, where he comes from, or what he's possibly going to do next. I mean, they pretty much say point for point why he is the way he is towards the end of the film. But for the longest time, you can just kind of make it up for yourself. But I'll go over that in just a second. Robert Sheehan in this film is actually really good as well. Now, I wouldn't say he gets to the same level as David Tennant because... I mean, I think David Tennant's given the better material, and people tend to gravitate towards the villain of the movie more so than the protagonist. It's not a hard rule, but for movies like this, the villain kind of does tend to stand out more. But what I really appreciate about Robert Sheehan's character in this film is that he felt real. Because at the start, he's kind of like, you know, the lovable thief, and then, like, he ends up stumbling into something he is not prepared for. And then he kind of does, you know, what anyone would do. He tries to help, but then literally as things get too tough or he might get caught, he bails, which I thought was very believable. Sometimes people just aren't that brave. But then realizing his mistake, he tries to correct it like any normal person probably would. Basically, it was about balance. That's why I like this character. He wasn't too heroic. He wasn't a complete coward. He just felt real. He felt like he was actually doing something in the moment. Could anyone else apply this role? Probably, but I'm glad it was him because, you know, he's a good actor and he deserves to keep getting work. Now, I've mentioned the two performances, and those are really the most outstanding thing about this film. Pretty much everything else is kind of by the numbers. I mean, this film is obviously very character-focused, and the movie leans heavily into it because the actual plot itself is pretty by the numbers. You know where it's going to go, you know what's going to happen, you know kind of the way it's going to end. And I'd say kind of one of my biggest problems with this film was the specific way in which it ended. Now, I'm not really upset about the actual ending. I'm more upset about the fact of just where it ends. There was no kind of wrap-up for this film. It's just it kind of did what it needed to do, and then it just ended. No kind of character revelations at the end, no kind of wrap-up to say, ah, everything's going to be okay in the end. It's just, it kind of just ended. And even though I didn't think this film was particularly amazing, I still kind of found myself wanting more from it because there were just one or two things which I really wanted to see the resolution of. And another scene I found kind of a bit iffy was one of the explanations for the characters because it's kind of towards the end of the film where the FBI kind of discover who this guy is and they pretty much kind of bullet point really quickly explain who this guy is and why he's doing the things that he's doing. And I understand why this scene exists. It's to kind of catch other characters up as to who this guy is and why he needs to be stopped. That's perfectly fine. And I understand why it's so brief. It's obviously to catch the characters up, but it's kind of to get back to the more interesting thing that's currently happening. I understand that. But I think the problem with this scene lies in the fact of that it does feel a little bit rushed because from an audience perspective, we kind of know this information already or you can at least make it up in your head. And because of this, it feels a little bit inorganic. Again, I understand why they have to do this. You have to catch characters up and kind of make sure everyone's on the same page. But from a storytelling perspective, it kind of felt like it was just that, just an information dump. I don't know, I didn't have that much of a problem with it. It was just something I'd noticed at the time. Overall, guys, I did like Bad Samaritan. The performances are easily the highlight of the film. Robert Sheehan and David Tennant are great in this film. It's creepy, it's atmospheric, it feels like a great game of cat and mouse where... 
definitely, the cat is definitely winning. But like I said, other than the performances, there's nothing much else about this film that stands out in a significant kind of way. But do I think you guys should watch this one? You know what? Despite not thinking it's particularly amazing, I would still recommend it. If you've got nothing else to watch, I would say give Bad Samaritan a watch, especially if you love David Tennant and Robert Sheehan, because the two of them do give really good performances in this film that are definitely worth watching. But if you're not really that interested about this film, I would say not to rush yourself to watch it, because at the end of the day, again, it's nothing amazing. Okay, guys, that's my review of Bad Samaritan. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think I should watch next? Whatever it is, drop it in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Michael. See ya.